Hey there, students. Welcome. Today, we're going to look at molarity and dilution. We are continuing our unit on solutions. You'll want a note-making material and a calculator so you can follow along with the calculations that I'm going to be doing. Very important that you're able to make these calculations. If you like algebra, I've got great news. Lots of algebra going on today. Bad news is this is AP Chemistry. We can't just have it be simple algebra. We have to make, well, okay, actually we're gonna keep it a simple algebra. Here's the issue, is the way they're writing the questions now, you could have a lot of gobbledygook in the question that you don't need to worry about. So as always, it's a reading test. You read the question well, you figure out what you need, what do you know, and you ignore all the other garbage that they throw in there to kind of throw you off. It's, it's crazy how much that that might actually be there. I, I even have an example coming up, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but let me give you, I said this is algebra, let me give you a formula. Here's our formula. This is our formula for molarity. Now let's talk about molarity. Molarity is a way to Calculate a number for concentration. Now we've already talked about concentration, like saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated. We looked at solubility curves. We talked about like dissolves like. Um, you can go back to previous video and watch all that if you missed it. But we're going to be looking at what is the most common way on the test that concentration appears, and that is this molarity. So I want you in your head to equate molarity and concentration. If they say concentration, you should immediately think molarity. If they say molarity, you should immediately know you're finding a concentration. They're the same thing, okay? Really, 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 really used that way on the test. I don't see it. They don't usually ask about saturated, unsaturated, supersaturated, things like that. This is the thing they ask about. Now, molarity, which also can be called molar, same thing there, is going to be abbreviated with a capital M. Okay. And you want to watch out that this molarity M is not confused with the molar mass M. There should be a difference in the context to remind you whether it's a molarity M or a molar mass M. So be careful. And I do want to say this, and this is only for those who have heard this before. If you have heard of something called molality, molality, notice how there's two L's there, and, and it's, it's one letter difference from molarity. Okay, do you see that? We're not talking molality at all. That's not what this is about. In fact, AP Chemistry says very clearly they're not going to ask you to do molality. So we're going to stick with molarity. That's what they're going to use. That's what we're going to use. I'm just saying if some other teacher has, at some point in time has taught you molality, you don't need it for this year. Okay. So molarity is moles of solute. There's our good friend moles again. Notice how it's everywhere. It really is because it's super important to chemistry. Moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Often I even put in the word total there. Total liters of solution. You'll see some examples coming up where that is truly the case. You're mixing things and you need a total liters of solution. Molarity is moles divided by liters, okay? But this is algebra, we could rearrange that and solve for liters or solve for moles, and, and you're gonna see in a few minutes as we go through examples. Lots of examples today. All right, I do wanna point this out. As our good friend moles is back, all the different ways we can get moles could be in play. Now, normally with concentration, we're gonna be looking for solids. Okay, I add you know, this many grams into this much water, what's the molarity? Okay, that's a typical situation. It could be a pure liquid though. That is, that's a possibility. I would need to know the moles of that compound and the liters that it's taking up. Okay. And it could be for gases. Now we don't normally measure gases in molarity, but we could. All I need for molarity is moles and liters, okay? And notice how in PV equals NRT, I have moles and I have volume, make sure it's in liters, and you've got moles per liter. You've got molarity right there in that question. In fact, you could do some arithmetic, and I hope I'm not gonna flip this real fast, but molarity for gases 
let's see, I'm going to divide by V, okay, and then I'm going to divide by RT. I think it's P over RT. I might have that flipped. You, you want to double check me on that, okay? But molarity for gases, that, that's a possibility. We could do that. It's moles per liter again. And V would be measured in liters and N would be moles, so it's right there in the equation. We don't often do gases in molarity. That doesn't normally help us do much with gases in molarity. We like to know pressures and volumes and temperatures, not usually molarity, but it is a possibility. So I wanted to point that out to you. Okay, we're gonna go through lots of examples. I think you'll catch up on this as we do lots of examples. Because again, this is the easy part. Figuring out what to do with it is maybe the hard part. So let's do some examples to find out. Uh, pause if you need to. I'm going to clear, here we go, clear the screen. And we will, nope, 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 not what I wanted to do. My apologies. Okay, there we go, we're back. Um, I wanted to click here. <laughs> there we go, that's all I wanted to do. That was the long way around doing that. How do we make a 1.000 liters of a 0, .0 no, 0 0.5000 molar solution of copper two sulfate, that should say pentahydrate. There should be a five in front of that because that's the way it normally comes. And I have the molar mass there, okay? so. That's what we want to do. We want to make that solution. So what do we need to know to make that solution? Okay. Well, actually, the first thing I need to ask is what do we know? We do know, we know, oh, I better get something right with, we know our volume is going to be one liter. So I know the liters of my solution. And I know my molarity is 0 0.5000 molar. So I know my molarity, okay? So what's left to find? Um, I have molarity and I have liters. What I don't have is moles. So let's find moles, okay? Which by the way is N, let's find moles. How am I gonna find moles? Well, if molarity is moles per liter, and then moles is gonna be molarity times liters, right? So moles is going to be, well, this is easy, 0 0.5000, lots of significant digits, times 1.000 liters, lots of significant digits there. Okay, my moles is 0 0.0, wow, no, 0 0.5000 moles. Okay, there's my moles. Now, how do I actually make that solution? Well, I need half a mole of copper two sulfate pentahydrate. Again, there should be a little five there. Sorry, that got left off. Okay, how do I do that? Hmm, I, I, I don't know. Oh, but, but if I knew grams, I would know how to handle grams, wouldn't I? Okay, let's find some grams. 0 0.5000 moles of copper two sulfate pentahydrate. And I need to have moles on bottom, so one mole, and I want grams, so grams on top. Oh, and very nicely, and they do this a lot on the test, very nicely I have the molar mass given to me in grams per mole. There's the grams, there's the moles, grams per mole, okay? So I'm ready to find the grams, that's all there is to it. All right, so, so simple algebra going on here. So I'm gonna take, and, and lots of significant digits, four sig digs and five sig digs going on. Obviously I'm gonna round to four sig digs after this calculation, okay? We have lots of significant digits. We're gonna come back to that thought in a minute. But that time, 0 0.5 times 249.68. I'm gonna measure out 124. Now here's where the rounding's gonna occur, 0.8 grams. Okay, that's what I need. I need to measure out in my laboratory, put in some sort of container, 124.8 grams of copper two sulfate pentahydrate, and then get it to a one liter volume in order to make this kind of solution. So how do we get it to a one liter volume? 
I'm glad you asked because you really, really, really ought to know this for the AP chemistry tests. They have in the past asked this a lot on the free response in terms of how do you, what are the steps to do this? And as someone who has the experience of grading, let me share some of the important things you need to know. Um, I really would say it's five steps. So let me clear. And we'll, let's talk about the five steps for making any solution, okay? And the example I took is the one that's right here so that we could talk about it easier. All right. Uh, let's go with, I'm going to go with dark green. Okay. So first off, what did we do? We calculated how many grams, okay? So that would have been the first step. And, and if I was asked, what are the steps to make a 0.5 molar solution or 0.5, no, one liter of 0.5 molar solution. If I was asked the steps for it, that's where I would start. Sometimes they actually want you to calculate the grams and then you do that. And sometimes they just ask in general, how do you do it? And you would just say, you begin by calculating the grams of the solid you need. Okay, now if this was a liquid or gas, I wouldn't really want grams, that wouldn't be helpful. But as a solid, most definitely it's gonna be helpful. So you can see on a balance, they have their empty beaker, was empty, and then they just keep filling it until it reaches 124.8 grams. So step one, calculate and measure out the mass of the solid. Okay, like pause and write that down. Calculate and measure out the mass of the solid. Thank you. Okay, step two, we're gonna add the solid into the flask. And the flask has this very, very narrow neck. Don't know if you can see. A volumetric flask is absolutely what you're gonna to want to use. And since I want one liter, I'm gonna use a one liter volumetric flask. Makes sense, right? They come in all sizes, they really do. In, in my laboratory, I have one liters and half liters and quarter liters and 100 milliliters and 50 mil. I'm like, I've seen itty bitty teeny tiny ones that hold like 10 milliliters. They're all so cute. I don't know what you would do with them, but they're also very cute. Okay. And they come in big sizes too. Any size you want, you'll have that. So you use it. If I didn't have a one liter and I was going to make two half liters instead, if I made an error in one, I'm probably duplicating that error in the second. And, and now, now I've got double the amount of error. So do you understand why we prefer one volumetric flask with the size exactly what we need? And, and I'm gonna come back to that word exactly as well. That's gonna haunt you, so be careful. Okay, so I take my one liter volumetric flask and you're like, I've got a solid and I've got to get this into the flask. Well, okay, let's be smart about this. You start by adding some pure water, some distilled or deionized water to your beaker, stir it around, start dissolving that solid, and then pour it, usually with a funnel. You see they're using a funnel there. Pour it into the flask, because obviously a liquid pours a lot easier. Now be careful you don't use too much water. You don't want to overflow the flask just trying to get the solid in the flask. Small amounts of water at a time. If you have to you know, add water, pour it in, add water, well, add water, stir it up, pour it in, add water, stir it up, pour it. If you have to do that several times to be sure you got it all out, that's great, but do that. What would you need to say on the AP exam? You need to be able to say, add some water to dissolve the solid and pour it into the volumetric flask. Okay. Then I would strongly recommend the next step be something about filling it about half full. Now, here's where it really doesn't matter how full. You want to fill it about halfway. So you could use those words exactly, about halfway or, or part of the way. Or, or not totally full with water, you know, that sort of thing. Again, we're using the pure distilled or deionized water, so it's pure water, all right? So we, uh, we fill it with some water, and then, and then we wanna hear you or see you write down, swirl it, okay? So you're going to add it about half. So I've, I've cleaned out my beaker by dumping, you know, adding water and dumping. It's in there. I've made sure I have about half full of water, and now I'm swirling. That starts the dissolving process. I'm not necessarily going to guarantee it is dissolved, all of it, by this time. There's no reason to think it has. I'm going to start the dissolving. So swirl it. They say thoroughly. I like that word, thoroughly. How thoroughly, I don't know. 
say swirl it for a minute or so, that would work too. Just one little and then set it down. No, that's not enough, okay? So swirl it a lot would be fine. So swirl it, swirl it, swirl it, get it started. Then, then fill it almost full, like towards the neck, okay? To where, because again, it's got a long, thin neck. Fill it almost full and invert it. And we like to see that word invert. So notice two ways of getting it to dissolve. We started with the swirl with it about half full. Now it's mostly full. And I would probably say that, fill it mostly full with deionized water and then invert several times. Okay, now the, the little this from chem file here, which is a great summary of how to do this, absolutely. It says 10 times. There's no particular right or wrong number, lots of times. And, and so you, you do, you, you stopper it, and then put your thumb over the stopper and, and you, you invert it, okay? You're gonna feel like a mad scientist, those old sci-fi movies where they're taking this and this and they're pouring it back and forth and no one does that, that's wrong, okay? But it, it's gonna feel like something from a movie where you're, you're mixing it over and over again by inverting it because that's what you're doing, you're mixing it up. Now we hope it is extremely close to being 100% dissolved. Now here's the key step. We're not yet exactly at one liter. We will fill it to the line, and then we'll know, and then we will know, okay, so line or the mark on the neck, we, we need to see that. And then we'll know you're at exactly one liter. And now here's the thing, I, I mentioned this earlier. Most volumetric flasks, that mark is calibrated to have that many significant digits. It's not just one liter like you get a liter bottle of Coke and it says one L. This is, it, it will tell you on the side of the flask, it, it's usually like 1.000 liters, like that. it is that accurate, that extremely accurate, we can get that many significant digits. That's why we love volumetric flasks. I mean, of a graduated cylinder to measure in, I mean, you could do this in a graduated cylinder, but they usually maybe go to uh, the tenths place. This is going to the thousandths place. This is a lot better. You could do it in, in an Erlenmeyer flask. Those usually uh, go to the tens place. This goes to the thousandths place, a whole lot more accurate. That's why you want to say volumetric flask. That's why you want to say, start dissolving the solid, put it in, fill it halfway, swirl it, add enough water to get it to the neck, invert it, add enough water to get it to the mark. And once it's to the mark, you might invert it several times again. Okay, this would be the part where you invert it until it all dissolves. So that's how we're going to physically make this kind of solution. They do ask that every so often on the free response portion. So I wanna be sure we cover that well. So hopefully that works for you. Um, I would see it as five steps. Calculate and measure out the grams of the solid, get into the flask, add enough water to swirl it, stop, add some more water stopper and invert it, and then fill it to the line and invert it some more. Okay, so in my mind, five steps going on. Okay, you, um, if you have, if you've ever done this with another science teacher, you, you very likely have had slightly different than five steps. I just see it as five steps. A problem like this, unfortunately, is probably only worth like two points on the AP exam. It's not usually worth a lot of points. But you also don't need to be writing these paragraphs like you see before you. I've been telling you the key things you need to write down. So it should be a pretty quick question to answer to get your two points. Okay, uh, so this is an old test question and I wanted to show you this because I wanted to talk about this. Uh, we're in no way going to be able to answer this question and that's okay, that wasn't my point. They love pictures, don't they? And look, you got pictures, you got three pictures, three pictures of acids, yay, okay. Um, here's what I wanted to stress. This is why this is appearing here. See how it says the molarity of the acids in the solutions is the same. 
Okay, stop right there. If the molarity is the same, what do we know is the same of these three acids, acid one, two, and three, whatever they are. We don't have to care what they are. We're not gonna answer the question. We're just talking about what it means that the molarity is the same. Well, if molarity is moles divided by liters, then I know I have the exact same amount of moles of each acid in these three containers and I, and, and I have the same amount of volume of liquid in those. That's knowing a lot. I know the same moles and the same volume. They're probably likely at the same temperature. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? It, it's now going to simplify what I need to do to answer the question because a lot of the things are the same. So I wanted to just point that out. They love drawings and they are telling me the molarity is the same. And so I, I wonder, could I go through and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen things. Now wait a minute. There, none of those had the same number of like drawings, yet I'm told the same moles and the same volume. So so to answer the question, actually, the question's probably based on the fact that they don't have the same amount of particles in total. Okay, we would simply, once we know some acid and base equilibrium, be able to come back and use that to our advantage. But what do we know? If the molarity is the same, we know the moles are the same and the volume of solution is the same. That's some powerful stuff to know. So there you go. Okay, uh, this is, something that would easily be on the multiple choice. Uh, I have some indium nitrate, that's I-N, indium nitrate, and it's added to distilled water and make a solution where the concentration is 0.99 molarity. What is the concentration of the indium ion in the solution? Okay, um, so indium nitrate, I'll go orange. Indium nitrate, when dissolved, is not gonna stay together because all nitrates dissolve. We're gonna come to this idea later, okay? This is next unit, but it's going to break apart like this. I get three nitrates for every one indium. Do you see that? It's a one to three ratio. Now, what am I told? I'm told the concentration, the molarity of the nitrate is 0.99. So if the molarity of the nitrate is 0.99, then what's the molarity there? Well, this is why it'd be a multiple choice question. Isn't that easy enough to go, okay, well, it's a three to one ratio, so let's divide that by three, and wouldn't it be like 0.33 molarity? Yeah. So real quick, multiple choice kind of question, easy enough to do. Um, there we go, that, that's all there is to it. That's what you need to recognize is happening though, that it's gonna split apart, we're gonna to get to net on equations next unit, and that it's a one to three ratio. And now that one to three ratio is very easily found just right there, that, that's all there was to that. That's where I got that from. One indium, because we don't write ones, to three nitrates. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that's another way molarity might be expressed on the test. Okay, um, we're actually gonna get to things that are very much calculation-based. Okay, so here we go, something far more typical. Before you write anything, let's read the question. A student uses visible spectrophotometry to determine the concentration of red 40 in a sample solution. First, the student prepares a set of red 40 solutions of known concentration. Then the student uses spectrophotometer to determine the absorbance of each of the state standard, I don't know why that became stand, standard solutions at a wavelength of 623 nanometers and constructs a standard curve. Finally, the student determines the absorbance of the sample of unknown concentration, and it keeps going. The original sample used to make the solutions for the standard, again, it's supposed to be standard curve, was prepared by dissolving 2.45 grams of red 40 with a molar mass 496.42 grams per mole in enough water to make 100 milliliters solution. What's the molar concentration of this solution? This is very, very similar to a question I saw on the AP exam. 
what do I need to do to answer this question? I need to find the molarity. Oh, let me get a color here. Uh, let's go back to, I need to find the molarity. What's the molarity? I need moles and I need liters. Um, I have grams, I can get moles from grams, and I have mil, mil, do, wait, wait. Do you see what just happened? I don't need any of this at all. None of that is of any use to answering this question at all. Have I not warned you it's a reading test now? Okay, that's all gobbledygook that I don't need. Do not get lost in it, do not. Do not think the question's harder than it is. Okay, all those steps for focusing on the question that your English teachers have taught you for doing on the STAR exam, you wanna be doing them now on the AP exam. Find the question before you even read. Find the question. What is the molar concentration of the solution? There's the question because there's the question mark. And I'm like, oh, well, molarity is moles per liter. I need moles and I need liters. Grams can get me moles and milliliters gets me liters. So I'm done. I really actually could have saved myself the time by not reading any of that stuff up above. Now, you might want to just glance through it real fast, you know, super fast read, make sure you're not missing anything. Uh, but that's, that was all extra information. So expect that to happen. Okay, that doesn't mean it's a hard question if they give you a lot to read. For whatever reason, it means that they're just trying to throw you off. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do to answer this. Oh, I need to clear the drawings. Here we go. Okay, so I, I, I removed the gobbledygook. There's the question statement. Let's actually do this. So bust out your calculators. Here we go. Molarity is moles per liter. I need moles. The moles is I don't have the moles. Let's find the moles. 2.54 grams of red 40. So grams is gonna go down here, and I was told 496.42 grams is one mole. Oh, I already wrote, mole. there's my grams per mole. Okay, grams per mole, right there. Okay, so grab your calculator. How many grams is this? And I'm gonna round to, it looks like three significant digits. So I get point zero zero. those don't count as significant digits, they were just placeholders, 494 moles. Now I have my moles, point zero zero four nine four moles. And I need liters, up, up, did you catch that? I need liters, I have milliliters. They absolutely expect you to be able to turn milliliters into liters. Remember, there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So I'm going to take that and divide it by a thousand, or in other words, move the decimal place three times. Okay. So 0 0.100 liters now. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to divide by 0 0.1, which, surprise, surprise, makes it, and that zero is just there for the looks. I like to show it. So you can easily see the decimal. You know, I am drawing my decimals pretty big. Uh, but like, especially on your papers, when I've graded them, there's some, I'm like, did you put decimal there? Is it just the shadow from on the paper? Is, you know, did you just tap your pencil down accidentally? It's hard to know sometimes. That's why I like the zero there. So point zero, and again, I'm going three significant digits because that's what I have. So four, nine, four molarity. There we go. Or molar. 0 .4, 0 0.0494 molar is probably how we would actually verbalize that. Okay. Molar molarity, same thing. So there we go. There's my answer. I would, I would absolutely show that on my work on the free response because that's my work. There could be points just for doing that. Um, and then I would show all this and I would box my final answer. Like, I know this doesn't look neat and all that, but this is easy to follow for a grader. And we can tell exactly what you did. And we can tell what you're calling your final answer and you have a nice little label on it. And then there you go. So this is a just very clear cut example of what we'd be looking for, for an answer to this question. Okay, let's try some more. As I said, lots of examples coming up. Okay, 
a 0 0.20 mole sample of calcium chloride and 0 0.10 mole sample of lithium chloride are dissolved in water and diluted 500 milliliters. What's the concentration of chloride ion in the solution? Interesting. Okay. So concentration, key word there, concentration. Did you catch that? Okay. Concentration. When you think here concentration, you should think molarity. So I need moles and I need liters. Let's see what we got. Moles, I have, I do have moles. I have moles of calcium chloride and I have moles of lithium chloride. And uh, do you see that number there? That's gonna complicate things. For every one calcium chloride, I actually have, because remember to ask for the chloride ion, I, I'm gonna get two chloride ions. So it's not 0.2 moles, it's gonna be 0 0.40 moles. Are you with me? This is the moles of calcium chloride, and for every, it's a one to two ratio. Calcium chloride to chloride ion, it's a one to two ratio. So if this was 0.2, then this would have to be 0.4, okay? Plus, plus, because I'm mixing, okay? And I'm mixing with, okay, well, this is easy. That's just, those are ones, because we don't write ones. So plus 0 0.10 moles. And it says we dilute it to 500 milliliters. So there we go. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did you catch it? I can't do this with milliliters. It must be liters. Okay. Boom, converted. I mean, when you're used to it, that's, we don't need to see you divide by a thousand on the tests. We understand if you, you know, show 0.5 liters that you have done that. That is an expectation. If you cannot turn milliliters into liters, you need to practice that. I'm sure you can go online and just, you know, get some sort of thing that quizzes you over turning milliliters into liters. Okay, but, but you got to be able to do that. You got to. So make sure you can do that. On the top, I have a total of 0.5 moles. And then on the bottom, I have 0.5 milliliters. So no surprise, the answer is and I'm gonna to go to two significant, did, oh, this really, the way they wrote that, that's one significant digit. I'm gonna to go to one significant digit, one molarity, one molar. Here we go. One molar to the chloride ion. Answered the question, okay? So they could ask it that way, that's another example. Okay, now molarity I feel is pretty straightforward. Okay, so we're, we're done doing examples of that. Of course, we're gonna practice. Uh, so when you're done here, you get into Canvas and you practice. Uh, let's talk also dilution. Perfect place to talk about dilution. When you take something that's like already a liquid and you add more water to it, that's gonna change the concentration. The good news is the way we can calculate the new concentration is super easy. It's this easy little equation right here. M1V1 equals M2V2. Yep. And so I want to point this out. If I can grab it on my drawer here, it didn't want to come out. Okay. So we have here a, a section on the formula chart that says gases, liquids, and solutions. Okay. I'm going to point out to you that I don't see this equation anywhere on there. It's not in that section at all. Okay. So does that mean you don't get it? Well, let's, let's look at the rest of the formula chart, okay? I'm looking at all the other sections and I've got to say, I know I don't see M1V1 equals M2V2 anywhere on this formula chart. So what does that mean? That means they consider this equation so easy that you better have it memorized. That's what that means, okay? It's not on the form of the chart. I really do strongly expect that they could ask questions about dilution. So be sure you have this memorized. And is this easy? M1V1 equals M2V2. Okay? All right, so M1 is the original molarity and V1 is the original volume. M2 is the new molarity, V2 is the new volume. We're gonna do lots of examples together to see how this works out. It is that easy, like one of those is an X and you have three other numbers and you just solve for X. It's very much like P1V1 equals P2V2. 
okay? Very, very much. You're going to do some multiplication, some division, and you got your answer. Let's give this a try. If 50 milliliters of one molar blue one is diluted to a volume of two liters, what's the concentration? Okay. So, well, it would help if I have something to annotate with. Let's go bright green now. M1V1 equals M2V2. Always worth writing the equation. Right, those are Vs, by the way. Uh, molarity one is one. Volume one is 50 milliliters. Molarity two, well, ask for what is the concentration. So that's my X, that's what I'm looking for. And volume two is two liters. Do you see what just happened? I have milliliters and I have liters. Can't do that. I can't do this math and get the right answer. I have to make them match. I don't have to have them both liters. You absolutely could. I don't have to have them both milliliters. You absolutely could, but you have to have them match. So one way or the other, it doesn't matter, liters or milliliters, you pick. I like doing milliliters because then I get to do this little cheat of I turn the decimal of liters into a comma, make sure it's the thousands place and add on an ML. So there we go. Two liters is 2,000 milliliters. That's how I like to handle it. You could absolutely divide 50.0 by 1,000 and move the decimal and do it in liters. You'd get the same answer either way. They have to match. Okay? Pick milliliters or liters, but they have to match. I mean, you could pick deciliters or centiliters, but they don't use that on the test. It's milliliters or liters on the test. So I'm just left doing the math here. Um, so I'm going to take 2,000. No, I'm not. I'm going to take the 1 times 50 milliliters, and I'm going to divide that by the 2,000. So my new molarity is 0 0.025 molar. Now here's a way to check your work. If I increase, the, they're inversely proportional. So if I increase the water amount, it should decrease the concentration, decrease the molarity. And I did increase the water amount. So I expect it to decrease and it did decrease. There we go. Okay. Inversely proportional. If the water amount goes up, the molarity has to go down. I mean, it has to. That's why if you put a lot of ice in a drink and you don't get to it and the ice melts, it's going to, it dilutes your drink and you're like, this doesn't taste the same. It tastes, you know, less concentrated. Well, because it is. So there we go. That's one way we could see it happen. M1V1 equals M2V2 for dilutions. Um, here's another way it could happen. I'm going to go with the yellow now. Two milliliters of 0.6 molar MgCl2 is added to 400 milliliters of distilled water. What is the concentration of the Mg2 plus and the Cl minus in the resulting solution? And they do us a favor. They say assume volumes are additive. Look, if they say this on the test, dead giveaway. Hear me. Giveaway. Flat out. They are flat out telling you dilution. A dilution occurred. If I'm sounding a little mean, I just want this to sink in, okay? If they say volumes are additive, you have to do dilution calculation. You will have to. There's no way that they would say that and you can't, you not do a dilution calculation. You'd be doing it wrong. Okay, so let's figure this out. We want the concentration. Okay, I had a volume, let's call that volume one, and I had a molarity, let's call that molarity one, and I have a new volume, let's call that volume two, and um, it looks like I'm looking for molarity two. Let's start there, okay? M1V1 equals M2V2. M1 is 200. They put decimal there, so it's three sig digs. I don't like doing that. I would say use scientific notation, but and they do it on the test, unfortunately. 200 milliliters times 0 0.60 molarity. And I want to know the new molarity when the volume is, oh, 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 volumes are additive. That is not my volume two. 
what is going to be my volume two is adding, because they're additive, adding them up, 600 milliliters. I added up the two milliliters from there to the 400 milliliters of water there. Do you see that? 200 plus 400, 600, 600 milliliters. Now I can do this because I got milliliters for both. I'm looking for molarity. This is going to work, but that's what I wanted to point out. So if you were like yelling at the screen saying I labeled it V2 and I shouldn't have, you were absolutely right. I, I shouldn't have. So you want to be careful. Okay. With dilution, you should have, and, and notice I can't just be like, well, I should have more at the end. Well, because 400 looks more, but okay. You get the idea. It's additive. Now I'm going to take the 200 times 0.6 and I'm going to divide by 600. And I see that molarity 2, which was my x, is 0.2. Okay. Now I have not officially answered the question yet, but I have results. So let's check this. I expect dilution has occurred, so my molarity is going to decrease. It was 0.6, now it's 0.2. Yes, it has decreased, so I'm on the right track. Now this is for MgCl, and it tells me, asks me for the concentration of them. So in one MgCl2, what's that ratio? I get one Mg for every two Cls. Well, let me put the two there, sorry. Okay, one Mg plus, two plus for every two Cl minuses there, one to two ratio. So this is how much MgCl2 overall I have. That means I'm going to have 0.2 molarity Mg. So what do I do? Oh yeah, I'm going to double it. 0.4 molarity. Oh, and I forgot the significant digits. We should add a zero there. There we go. 0 0.20, 0 0.40 molarity for the Cl. Because it's for every one Mg, I have two Cl minuses. It's more concentrated because there's more Cl minus there. There we go. That's all there is to it. Okay. This actually would be, you know, really quick, easy, one, likely one point calculation, maybe two, I don't know. Um, but it would test a lot of chemistry understanding, both of dilution, of catching what it means to be additive, and the ratio of ions in a compound. Okay. So, really good question to test a lot of chemistry all at once. So expect questions that do that, because they like to do that. There's a good reason they like to do that. It tests a lot of chemistry at once. Very efficient question. A student has 100 decimal point milliliters of 400, 0.400 molar copper two sulfate, and is asked to make 100 milliliters of 0.150 molarity copper two sulfate for spectrophotometry experiment. Calculate the volume of 0 0.400 molar copper two. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I have read through all that gobbledygook and I have found, uh, we'll, we'll go by that. I have found the question. Calculate the volume. Okay. This is the volume of the 0.400 molarity. This is volume one I'm asked to calculate. How much of that and you're like, well, didn't they tell us 100? Oh, I'm not going to necessarily use 100 milliliters. I have 100 milliliters at my disposal. I want to know how much I actually need to use. So volume one is my question mark. Molarity one, I do absolutely know. Molarity one's point for molarity. And I am told volume two is 100 milliliters. And I'm told molarity two, which better be less, okay. Oh, good, it is 0 0.150 molarity. Okay, so, so we're really actually very good to go here. Let's do this. M1V1, okay, M1V1 equals M2V2. 0 0.40 molarity times a volume of X equals molarity 2.150 molarity times one and we want if you flip those we wouldn't mind we you know multiplication doesn't care all right so we're going to solve for x x is volume one 
is what we're finding with x, okay. So I'm gonna take 0.15 times 100 and then divide it by 0.4. And I see all I need of the original amount is 37.5 milliliters. There's my answer. So again, I had 100 milliliters at my disposal, but that's just at my disposal. That's not saying I'm gonna use it all. Okay. Dead giveaway would have been the fact that it, they're like, at the end, you should have 100 milliliters. And I'm like, well, if I have 100 milliliters to begin with and I add water, then how am I going to be left with 100 milliliters? It doesn't make sense. Okay. So that's how we interpret a question like that. So there's our volume of 37.5 milliliters is what I need. Now, I liked this one, took this off an old question here. They, they, did a part B. The following laboratory equipment is available for preparing this solution. We have a centigram balance, whey paper, funnel, 10 milliliter beaker, 150 milliliter beaker, 50 milliliter graduated cylinder, 100 milliliter volumetric flax, 50 milliliter burette, and distilled water. That's a lot. Not, okay, don't get lost in it. Let's focus on the question. Describe the essential steps to most accurately prepare the 0.150 molar copper 2 sulfate from the 0 0.400 molar copper 2 sulfate using the equipment listed above. Okay, so that list that I just read above it is like all the options. I don't need to use them all. Very likely I won't use them all. But they, they, had, they had a clue in there. What's going to be most accurate? Well, I don't know why that all disappeared. There we go. Um, okay, so we're going to look for what is most accurate. Okay, well, that that I know. But let's start at the beginning. Do you remember the last time we made a solution? Okay, we, we said the first step was to calculate and measure out the mass of your solid. I'm not working with the solid. I'm working with the liquid. So I need to calculate the volume of the liquid. Well, that's why this is a part B. I already know the volume of the liquid. We just calculated it, right? Didn't we say V1 was 37.5 milliliters? Okay. So there's my volume one. So what do I do? Okay, step one. I'm going to use what's the most accurate way to measure out 37.5 milliliters? Well, most definitely a graduated cylinder. They were born to measure, like literally, they are created for measuring accurately. Okay, so we're going to use that. Uh, could you use the 50 milliliter burette? Yes, you could. Absolutely. Uh, could you be more precise with a burette than a graduated cylinder? Uh, it, it, it depends on how they compare. Okay. Um, it is a very good possibility they'd have the same amount of accuracy. Uh, normally, for a liquid, we would use a graduated cylinder. Burettes tend to be for when we do titrations and, and things like titrations. So let's avoid the burette for today. Okay? And if you have no clue what I just said when I said titrations, it's totally okay. That's coming up much later. Let's focus on what we need for now. The graduated, so I would, I would say we're going to use the 50 milliliter graduated, please write it out, cylinder, don't just Go GC, please write it out. Okay, use the 50 milliliter graduated cylinder to measure exactly 37.5 milliliters of the 0 0.400 molar solution. That's my step one. Step two, how do we want to make any solution? Volumetric flask. Um, does the size of the volumetric flask match the size that I want? Yes, because if you go back, it said we want 100 milliliters of it. Okay, so, so there we go. It does match. So I would pour into 100 milliliter volumetric flask. Please write out volumetric flask. Okay, three. Add some water. Um, do they, they say distilled water? Okay, so you might put in, you know, distilled water. 
until about half full, swirl, okay, four, add water to the neck, stopper and invert. Okay, so okay, and then five. Add water to the line on the neck and stopper and invert. There, I probably it's probably a two-point question, and I probably got all my points right there. That that wasn't too bad, was it? Okay, do you see how I summarized what we earlier? had looked at there, I hope you do. Okay, so that's the steps I would take. Very essential, I wanna go through this again. I pick graduated cylinders are born to measure liquids. Never use a beaker to measure liquids. Beakers are holding containers. They have often measurements on them to give you about. But when this measurement's 100 and the next line's 150, and there's no lines in between, I don't really know like what's going on in between. They're not born to measure, they're born to hold. Okay, whey paper, they were trying to throw you off. I'm not working with the solid, don't need whey paper then, okay? Could I use the funnel? Yes, actually, I might have used the funnel when it said you use the 50 uh, pour, I might say pour using funnel. Now, in the past, that has not been a sticking point, like you don't, gain or lose a point whether you say using the funnel or not, but you could say that. Did I need the balance? No, it's not a solid. I don't need the balance, okay? Uh, we decided against the 50 milliliter burette and we absolutely did use the distilled water. So there we go. Okay, and again, all volumetric flasks have a line on the neck that is exactly the volume the flask says. It measures one volume, one line, one volume, but it measures it super exactly. That's why we love volumetric flasks for measuring stand and making solutions specifically. We usually use them for making solutions. In fact, we love that line on the neck so much. What we'll often do is pour in water till it gets very close and then literally use a dropper to go drop by drop by drop to make sure that to the very, well, to the very one drop, our meniscus hits that line, the bottom of our meniscus. Now, in the past, you'd haven't necessarily need to say, add water till the bottom of the meniscus touches the line, but that's what we're doing. You could say, add water, drop by drop. And to, until uh, bottom of the meniscus reaches the line, okay? Like what I'm really trying to stress is if we can get the bottom of the meniscus to hit that line, we know it is 100 milliliters to a huge degree of accuracy, maybe even to the point where we can have like that many, look at all those significant digits in that measurement that would be a hugely accurate number, and that's what we want in laboratory as comes. Okay, so, so that's something I saw on an old test, and I wanted to go through that with you. The first one, again, lots of reading, but when we focused on what we had, it was not a too bad of a calculation. This one, we needed more of an answer to, but it was a great review of how to make that solution. And now we were starting with a liquid and not a solid. So I hope you caught the changes. If you didn't go back earlier in the video and catch the changes between whether I'm using a solid or whether I'm starting with a liquid, because here we were starting with a liquid and the earlier one, we were starting with a solid. Okay, so I hope this helps you to understand the uses for the molarity formula and the dilution equation. Very big key, super duper, ooper, schmooper important formulas for use on the AP test. They don't give you either. They give you the molarity one on the from the chart in words. Moles of solute per liters of solution. They don't even show you it as a formula. Will you in your panic the day of the test be able to find it that way? Well, I hope you'd look if you 
brain fart and forget it. It is there. But you're likely looking for something that looks like a formula, and it's not going to be that way. Okay, and then M1V1 equals M2V2 is not even on your formula chart. They expect you to know that. So hopefully easy formulas that by the time you do the practice in Canvas, you will have. Uh, but that's what we got going on. Hope this has been good for you. I really try to harp on some super important things to get you points on the test because these are considered easy. So they're often in conjunction with the other things that get points. So quite often, like free response wise, a molarity calculation would be one point out of maybe like a three point question where you have to do other things with it, okay? So be sure you get all your points, but just know it's very rare that you would just have, what is the molarity if here's the moles and here's the liters? It, you're not likely to see a question like that. It's always in conjunction with something else going on. Okay, I wish you luck on your practice and I'll see you next time.